I had never even heard of these things. And so from that point on, I became very interested in, in the question of evolution and, and uh, since have decided the Darwinian uh, processes are not uh, the whole explanation for life. In his book, Darwin's Black Box, The Biochemical Challenge to Evolution, Behe describes how in Darwin's time, the living cell was a black box whose contents were unknown, and how with the unraveling of the details within the cell, it emerged that it was actually a very complex structure. The powerful evidence in Behe's book was greeted with despair among evolutionist circles, and the work itself was soon being discussed by well-known media organizations. One of the points most concentrated on by Behe is that of irreducible complexity. According to Darwin's assumptions, complex organs in living things, such as the eye, ear, and heart, assumed their present forms by means of minute and gradual changes over billions of years. Scientific research reveals, however, that it is impossible for these organs, and in particular for the molecular machinery inside the cell, to have developed in stages. These are very complex structures consisting of a combination of small components. The system will serve no purpose at all if any of those components fails to fulfill its function. With these compound structures, these organs and systems possess a complexity that cannot be reduced to a simpler form. The best known example of irreducible complexity is the whip mechanism found in certain bacteria. The bacterial flagellum, a whip-like extension, has been known for a long time. Observations in the last decade, however, astonished the scientific world when they revealed its detailed structure. That is because the whip was shown to function not with a simple vibratory mechanism, as had been thought earlier, but with a very complex organic motor. Bacteria use the flagellum to move. This whip is the only organ in the world of living things capable of a genuine rotating movement. Thanks to this, the bacterium moves in whichever direction it wishes and can also make sudden stops and maneuvers. Thanks to the flagellum's spiral fibers and the engine in the root, the bacterium can spin like a propeller. The engine that permits the bacteria to move consists of two separate sections, the rotor and the stator, that provide a spinning movement within one another. Moreover, instead of ready stored energy, a flow of acid in the bacteria membranes is used as a source of energy. The engine mechanism consists of 40 different components, a structure with a complexity that cannot be reduced to a simple form. If even one of these pieces is missing or put in the wrong place, your motor isn't going to work. So this apparatus to assemble the flagellum motor is itself irreducibly complex. The flagellum also possesses an internally complex structure. Its organic structure consists of 240 separate kinds of protein. 
these components cannot have come together in small changes over the course of time to produce the bacterial flagellum. Since every tiny component is an organ that serves no purpose on its own, In the absence of the engine system that provides the rotating movement, for example, the bacterium would still be incapable of movement, even if it somehow came into existence by chance. According to the theory of evolution, organs that are not in use gradually become vestigial and disappear. From that point of view, in an evolutionary process consisting of 40 separate changes, any organ forming in the first stage will be weeded out by natural selection since it fails to fulfill any function and the evolutionary process will come to a halt right at the outset. This scientific fact is outlined by Dr. Jonathan Wells. The important thing to realize about natural selection is it selects only for a functional advantage. In most cases, natural selection actually eliminates things, things that have no function or that have a function that harms the organism. So if you had a bacterium with a tail that didn't function as a flagellum, chances are natural selection would eliminate it. The only way you can select for a flagellum is if you have a flagellum that works, and that means you have to have all the pieces of the motor in place to begin with. So. Natural selection can't get you the bacterial flagellum. It can only work after the flagellum is there and operating. This situation, which is true for the bacterial flagellum, also applies to its other components and organs. Modern day science reveals the meaninglessness of the theory of evolution's claim of gradual development in the face of the complexity of the bacterial flagellum. Indeed, no evolutionist biologist has been able to account for the flagellum's origins. The bacterial flagellum can only exist if all its components work flawlessly and at the same time. This in turn means only one thing, creation. In the same way that the engines that allow cars to move are the products of superior engineering, so this mechanism that allows bacteria to move is the product of a superior knowledge. That knowledge belongs to God, the Lord of all the worlds. Living things came into being not through a random stage-by-stage -stage process, but were created from nothing in a single moment. Almighty God reveals this in these verses from the Quran. God created every animal from water. Some